Hi there, Rosemary Killop from Building Networks. You know what, I'm curious. I'm curious as to whether you can forcibly insist on someone upgrading their building. When I've looked at the Building Act and all the interpretations over these last 30 years, I know the intent of the law was not to force an upgrade on someone unless the building had been deemed dangerous, insanitary or earthquake prone to a level that is no longer acceptable. Now that takes a lot of assessment and discussion, negotiation, uh, conversation prior to getting to that point of it being determined in that way and then it's a legal process for dangerous and insanitary, it's quite formalised before anyone can get kicked out of a building or the building demolished at the owner's expense. I've noticed in our more recent times around earthquake prone buildings that people have been unable to get the finance for such things. There's been a lot of, you know, both political, socio-economic reality issues here. So even though the building is earthquake prone and maybe people have decided electively to walk out of it, it doesn't mean the building's actually in the scrap heap yet. Again, with asbestos uh, buildings, you know, with asbestos being identified, people have been wrapping up things or locking up things where the building is, uh, you know, on the hit list for some removal or demolition. So let's think about a couple of things that I've seen happening recently, and I'd love your views on what you think. So you go into a motel complex or a small office and you find from times past it was never required for them to have any form of alarm no smoke detection whatsoever that was absolutely kosher in the permit days we are now all these years later in the millennia and we find ourselves staying there or working there should they should they not have an alarm system is not what the Building Act is asking us. The Building Act is asking us, is it dangerous if it doesn't? Well, it never did. So it is what it is, what it is. That's my view. And we can't insist. We could recommend, we could give them advice. But again, at the other end of the spectrum, now they're in the building consenting world, in the building act world, they come into an environment where they'll have to take out an assessment of a building act requirement and take a building consent application requiring some fire analysis, which could open up a whole can of worms for signage, illumination, exit doors, as well as the alarm they may choose to put in. So we're going to cause one heck of a lot of expense and a lot of process for that outcome. And they better be informed because that's the professional thing to do. However, is it absolutely necessary they do it? And is it absolutely a given that their building's dangerous if they don't? I think that's a very big call. The insurer may be inquiring and insisting it happens to lower the premium. Someone might stay there and freak out on TripAdvisor or be a tenant who feels unsafe at work because there isn't an alarm. But if it's an old building and it never required an alarm and it is what it is, what it is, leave it be. That would be my advice. Until such time as you are ready for that impact and if you want to electively put in something, go for what is required in 2019 when this video is being filmed. Don't take the mickey by going down to a shop and buying some smoke detection devices that are fit for purpose at home and put it in an office or put it in a motel because that's kind of making it even worse in my view. You're not actually getting to the heart of the issue. If you had someone, I'm sure, from Fire Emergency New Zealand coming through and said, gosh, you've only got a hush kit smoke detector jobby battery operator that you'd have at home and this is a friggin' office or motel, I think they would then say, well, that's dangerous. And where does it end? Where it starts is this is an old building with nothing. Leave it be. If you decide to do something, do the right thing, do the whole hog thing, as if it was a new building, as nearly as is reasonably practicable for its use, don't go for something that's second best. That's my tip of the day. Good luck with it and make sure that if you do have systems, you're keeping them serviced and maintained so they work when they need to.